Man City 2, Chelsea 0. Honestly, very predictable. Kind of went exactly as you thought it would go. First game of the new season. Doesn't get off to a great start. It's a loss under Enzo Maresca. We're going to go through the players. We're going to rank them from 11 to 1. We're not going to rank any of the subs. I just feel like none of them had a real impact for me to really put them anywhere in these rankings. So it's just going to be the first 11 that started the game. The lowest rated player is probably going to be about a 4 out of 10. Highest rated player would probably be like a 7. It wasn't exactly an amazing game. I think it was very boring. I don't like... The winger situation, but we'll get more into that as we talk about each player individually. Okay, so I'm actually surprised to be saying this, but starting off at number 11, I got Malo Gusto. It's like it's very rare you'll ever see me put Gusto at the bottom of any kind of rankings. And that's not because I love Malo Gusto, what I do, but it's not because of any kind of bias, just because he's always amazing. Whereas today, the more the game went on, the more I realised, oh, Malo Gusto is not actually having a great a great game here. He kind of got dribbled past way too many times, way too easily. Um, I didn't like him in the first half massively, not because he was doing anything wrong. He was just kind of, we saw it once or twice in preseason where he was effectively like a winger. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's that effective. Basically, it's just as simple as that. A lot of, the, very similar to a lot of people don't like Ben Chilwell beginning of last season, effectively being our winger. I'm seeing it now. I don't like it, especially hearing more about Enzo Mariska's system and, and how crucial the wingers are and how the wingers are straight up wingers. It's stay wide, be a winger. I don't, I didn't really like that our winger options today starting the game were seemingly Malo Gusto and Nkunku. I didn't really like that. Didn't like how it played out. I didn't think it played out great in preseason either. So I put Gusto at the bottom. And also because in the second half, that was more defensive issues for me. Just a bit too timid in the tackle and yeah, drill pass way too easily. Going up from there, number 10, I've got Caicedo. I don't really think Caicedo did much wrong. Sometimes players get a little bit low in these rankings because I just can't really think about what they did in the game. He walked over a yellow card. That's not the only reason I put him down here. I just think he was a bit weak in the midfield. I didn't really feel Caicedo's presence. I've put him down here. I'm not really too sure what to say. Going up from there, I've got Enzo Fernandez variation. Look, I, I don't know what to say. A lot of people love Fernandez. I don't really feel like he should be wearing the armbands, but I think that's sort of a, a bigger commentary maybe on the team in general because who in that team should be wearing it. I personally just, like, if there's no one to give it to, I'd rather just give it to Cole Palmer just simply because he's a mercurial, not because he's like a leader or anything or he gives us them vibes, just because he is an amazing player. I don't really think Enzo Warrants deserves the armband. Um, and again, in, in the midfield today, I just think he's fine. A lot of the times he, put in, he puts in very mid performances. I'm sure if you check his past completion stats, they were very high. I'm sure they were. But this, this is, these are the same things I thought you could say for when Jorginho was in the side. And people hated Jorginho for it. And I just think too many times in important positions, his touch wasn't good enough. Um, not enough you know, killer passes going forward. I feel like we saw more of that from Lavia, if anything. So, and also for the second goal, I think him and Caicedo got bypassed way too easily, which is why both of those players are a little bit lower here. Yes, it was also weak Chris Packet wrists from Robert Sanchez, but I just think the way in which Kovacic, and we saw him do it in a Chelsea trip many times, just dribble through teams, but the way in which he picks the ball up and just does it with ease, I just thought it just kind of screamed a bit of tiredness, lacking match sharpness, Heads had probably dropped to that point. We completely felt like, yeah, we're not getting back into this. And it was just kind of lazy. He didn't like it. didn't appreciate it. Going up from there, I got Fafana. I have literally nothing to say. He was fine. I don't really remember anything. It was just very quiet. Nothing great, nothing bad. Going up from there, I've got Nicholas Jackson. He should be walking away from this game with arguably two goals. He walks away with none. First one, he's offside. Stay onside. Second one, he's offside again, I think. They don't call it for offside, but I think he was. And either way... He, he shoots from three yards out and he puts it straight at the goalkeeper. So I have got uh, Jackson here. Going up from there, I've actually got Sanchez. Here's the thing. Sanchez makes the mistake. His, his hand is not strong enough. His wrists are not strong enough, right? And he should be saving that. Nine times out of ten, if you're a goalkeeper and you get a hand to the ball, you should have probably saved if it ends up going in. But I just think, he look, he made three saves. His distribution was all right. Up until that, I was probably going to put him a little bit higher if we had a decent enough game. Yeah, he makes the mistake at least the goal. We lost the game anyway, though, so I don't really think it made a difference. And for people who are annoyed about this, annoyed about Sanchez starting, I'm going to tell you a hard home truth right now. Petrovic is about same level goalkeeper. Jorgensen is probably like the same level of goalkeeper. They're all 7 out of 10 goalkeepers who can make decent saves, can also make a couple errors that leads to goal. None of them are amazing. Another, and we didn't buy a world class goalkeeper, so don't complain about it. Because what can you do? This isn't a surprise. These goalkeepers will make good saves for this season, and they will make a couple bad saves, like what we saw today. But hey, we're, get, we're getting um, we're getting Felix though, a player we don't really need, but we're getting him, and that's what everyone's gassed about. Going off from there, I actually have Cowell. You could argue he was a little bit flat footed for the goal. 
both of the defenders, him and uh, Kukure, seemed a little bit passive in that Haaland goal. But then again, Haaland's goals do make defenders look like that a lot of the time because it's just so hard to get the ball off him. Um, but I think after he had a pretty solid game, decent amount of interceptions and blocks and stuff, he was putting himself about, takes off the toe of Haaland to, to stop him getting his second, um, you know, takes some studs on the leg for it as well. Uh, so I just think, didn't start great, but he grew into it and he was all right. Um, going up from there, I've got Kukurea. Again, you could argue similar things for the first goal, but I think from there on out, he was probably our best defender. Stepped up really well. Um, I think he anticipated play really well. I liked Kukurea's performance. He's probably going to be that that left-sided defender for the whole season. Going up from there into the top three, I've got Nkunku and then I've got Palmer. I'm going to speak about them in one because they kind of had a similar performance for me and why I put them in the top three. And I basically put them in the top three because they were at least trying to make stuff happen. They were trying to create stuff out of nothing. Palmer taking shots from outside the box, trying little flicks here and there, trying passes. And if you if you compare someone like Cole Palmer's stats to maybe like Enzo Fernandez's stats, they're a lot less safe. Maybe there's a lot more errors there. But he was trying stuff. And at least some of those things could have led to goals. For example, if Jackson's on side, you get a goal there type thing. Playing key passes, you know, reverse balls into the box. Just trying to make things happen. The same thing with Kunku, trying to beat his man, being his man successfully. He almost wins a penalty. It's kind of here or there, you know, Anthony Taylor, I can't be able to talk about referees anymore. Just from the, literally almost every game I've watched so far this season, there's been some kind of shit referee. And, and Anthony Taylor with Chelsea is just sort of non-stop, so I kind of be asked to go through all of those. But yeah, I kind of put those players here. And then Lavia, I put number one, just because I feel like Lavia's con continued on from pre-season pretty well. He was very tidy. He was very tidy. I sort of thought he'd done what Enzo should be doing better than what Enzo was doing it, um, if that makes any sense. And the, the 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 sides of the game that he was covering, I, I just think our midfield in general wasn't great as a unit. I don't think they offer much. You know, I think it's it's a bit of a mere midfield to be honest in terms of how balanced it is. But I do think that Lavia was the best out of that bunch. Um, he had like a hundred percent pass accuracy in the first half, which I don't usually live and die by as a thing. But you know, in your first game and stuff, not his first game ever, but you know what I mean. New season, he hasn't really played much. Then he played thirty minutes of the last season. It's against Man City. Albeit not the best Man City side, there was a li missing a lot of their good, you know best players, but decent Man City side nonetheless. I thought Lavia easy. I think a lot of people would agree he was probably the best player all in all. No one off the bench really had an impact. I got to be honest. A lot of players left out of this game. You know, Chalaba, Chilwell, Sterling wasn't in there. Um, the Sassy I think is injured. But there's a lot of players basically just don't quite make the bench. Like an insane amount of players, players who you think would probably be moving on. And um, yeah, would any of those players made a difference today? We don't know. Would any of them had a better impact off the bench? We don't know. Uh, what happened is what happened in that game. And I think it was very predictable. It went exactly how it was going to go. I never really saw Enzo Maresca kind of beating Pep Guardiola at his own game type thing. And going into Wolves now, I think it's going to be a struggle for sure uh, in that game away from home. But we've also got the sort of conference, like, conference league game in between there. I think we'll see a completely different side. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, as you can see, I'm lacking that sort of enthusiasm at the moment, just kind of trying to see what direction the season's going to go in, and even past this season, to be honest. But 2 0 Man City, probably going to make a, enough videos sort of highlighting more what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah.